There are some disturbing rumors about a game that I have covered on this channel, a game that I think could be the largest MMO launch of 2023, Throne in Liberty. Disturbing rumors that have been brought to my attention by this lovely person, Force Gaming, who if you don't follow him, you really should. I'll link him down below. Now, before we get into some of this, I want to start this video by saying that a lot of the worst parts of this are just rumor. And I also want to add some context as we go through each thing. And as is the norm on my channel, I want to give you a little bit of hope because I tend to lean towards the positive. Although it might be a little bit difficult here, I will do my best. Now, the rumors of this are going to be based off of the Korean version of Throne and Liberty. Keep that in mind because it's very important for any of the positivity going forward. Now, Throne and Liberty has had some things that are not rumor that have been confirmed lately and some that are Pretty positive, coming from official sources like Amazon themselves. Of course, it will be published by them. It will be crossplay on consoles, as well as confirming that it will involve action combat. Probably something that looks similar to an ESO or Guild Wars 2, a kind of a hybrid version of that combat style, more so than, let's say, BDO, which is just straight combo action combat. It will also have massive battles, animal transformations with flying and apparently swimming. Now, I'm not sure, though, if that's going to be tied to animal forms, as it kind of was alluded to in this little announcement from Amazon, which would actually be pretty cool if it wasn't just birds that you could transform into. We have actually seen swimming in this game, so that's how you know that this game is being produced by Amazon instead of made by Amazon. And then, of course, there's a part that's very interesting to me. The use of environmental effects like solar eclipses and rainstorms that can be triggered by players. But there's also a somewhat creepy thing that's bringing back memories of when NBA 2K tried to do this to disastrous effect several years ago. You can upload a real photo of yourself, or as they say, a photo of whoever you want, which is totally not a weird thing at all and is totally normal and will not be abused in any way, shape or form. And the game will use AI customization to allow players to create characters based on real photos. Can't wait to see the horde of Asmongolds running around in Throne in Liberty. Wait a I, know, I know that guy. <laughs> oh my God, I forgot about this guy. If all of that sounds great to you, then awesome. You may want to end the video here, despite the detrimental effect that that would have on my watch time. Because as much as there is a lot of hype around this MMO, largely because it is really the biggest MMO potentially launching, it could also just plain suck. And there's a couple reasons why. So autoplay. There's some leaks as reported by Force Gaming that there has been a translation from the Korean test of auto hunting. Now, auto hunting could be referring to auto play. Auto play is fairly common in a lot of games, especially those that will have mobile ports or had originated on mobile. For example, Black Desert Online Mobile has auto play features. And I there was another one, I believe it was Lineage or one, one of those another mobile game from NCSoft that I have played in the past that actually also had mobile play. And as soon as I started playing that, I was done. And speaking of mobile ports, well, we're going to get to that in a moment, too. It's something that I was remiss in not talking about more back in when it was announced in December. It is both worse and better than what you're thinking. So hold on to that thought. So what is autoplay? Well, essentially, it's the game playing itself for you. There are various versions of this and have seen it mostly in mobile games where your character will auto run a path for you, even attack creatures on that path, complete quests, basically do everything for you. There are other less invasive versions of this, though, in many games we may have all already played, like EverQuest, for example, which added auto skill recently, which lets you set a skill to automatically go off like kick, frenzy or bash. This was essentially done to ease up spammy requirements rather than letting the game play by itself. It's still a form of autoplay, but a much, much less invasive. And some of you may actually argue that it shouldn't even be mentioned in the same realm as autoplay. It's also important to note here that this is a leak from the Korean version of the game. There are no leaks yet from any testing done by the Amazon version of the game, the game that will be launching in the West and in Japan, which could very well cut out this feature if it in fact does exist. 
Remember that in the NCSoft documents, they were very clear that they were trying to make this a global game, and Amazon has already been known to make changes to games that they publish. It remains to be seen exactly how they'll tackle both Throne and Liberty and Blue Protocol, but if there were invasive autoplay features, I imagine it will be widely rejected. Now, of course, I could be wrong, and people could generally accept the autoplay feature, but I'm going to lean towards no, it won't be, it won't be liked. But we need to circle back to a mobile version. And no, this is not some new announcement that Throne and Liberty is going to have a mobile version. Back in December, as you see here on screen now, there was a portion of it that was talking about a mobile port in a sense, essentially a stream of the game. But now you have several outlets reporting that Throne and Liberty will be available through NC Purple, an app that is designed to kind of merge the two through streaming, both mobile and PC, either playing mobile games on PC or PC games on mobile. You know, kind of what Diablo Immortal tried to do without an app, except just ended up with a mobile game on PC. It looks like when you play this through streaming, you'll be able to go about your normal business, fighting, doing everything, chatting. Funnily enough, I raised this as a point of concern in another MMO launch video kind of recently for PAX Day, and they may become more prevalent than we necessarily want as developers and publishers try to maximize the reach of their games. Of course, it makes sense to them that they want to tap into the mobile market, the largest market. Hell, we live in a day and age where Ultima Online has a mobile thing. It's perhaps a bit inevitable at this point, I'm just thankful when games are built with a PC in mind first, which it does sound like Throne of Liberty is. But inevitably, you're most likely going to have the game dumbed down, or at least the combat of the game a little bit, to make it work. Finally, we had to circle back to monetization. And monetization I talked about a little bit in the last video I did on Throne of Liberty, when we got some really some hints at what was coming when we first saw mention that NCSoft was going to try and make the monetization work for each market, specifically that a partial pay model would be something that they were looking into for the Western market, a battle pass or season pass, whichever you want to call it. Same same damn thing. Well, since then, we've had the launch just yesterday, actually, of the New World season pass. And with Amazon being the publisher of both Blue Protocol and Throne Liberty in the West, would anyone be surprised to see the exact same model being used? A cash shop with cosmetics alongside a battle pass, a season pass, and perhaps a box price. This is going to be a massive test for Amazon and their ability to be trusted in the market when publishing an MMO. If they have to cave to too much monetization and they're widely rejected, I don't think you'll get the same hype they did for their first two launches. While yes, New World and Lost Ark have kind of crashed from their initial peaks, they did hit huge marks when they first launched both being in the top 10 of Steam launches ever, with close to a million players and over a million players. That's still really good. I'm kind of expecting this to, to be a little bit of a spicier version of New World's monetization, maybe a little bit more aggressive than what New World is offering, but it's kind of what I'm expecting from this. They'll probably both be muted from their original versions, but also may still be a little bit too much to take for you or myself. Let's just say that I'm not expecting it to be Diablo Immortal, but I'm also not expecting it to be a Guild Wars 2. Now, the last speculation I want to get into here is the launch date. For months, it's been reported that Throne Liberty would be launching in the first half of 2023, but with reports that an alpha test is just now getting a start for Amazon's version this month in April, coupled with speculation that they may delay the launches to not go head to head with Diablo 4, which is launching in June, I'm putting more of this like a Q3 release. One additional note here, Blue Protocol is set for a second half of 2023 launch. Seeing how Amazon will navigate two MMO releases in the same year is going to be interesting, to say the least. At least with New World and Lost Ark, there were a few months between them after all of New World's delays. Q3 for Throne and Liberty and Q4 for Blue Protocol wouldn't really surprise me. But what do you think? When do you think it's going to launch? Thank you so much for joining me for this little update on Throne and Liberty, which I hope is going to be really good. I hope that the version we get here is something that we will actually all enjoy. And personally, for me, I really hope that there is no autoplay features because autoplay to me is just like a level boost with a lot more time investment. 
Why do something to skip the game that you are investing your time in? What is the point at that rate? If you want to kind of go back and see some of the other information, especially about what the game is about, I have that covered in this video here. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.